Ward, well done. We'll see you in the final. But behind you, Matt, onto their formation laps are our X30 Supers. If you're watching on telemundy.com, you've just seen the graphic on screen. But let me run you through the grid. Rinus van Kaltoot, perfect results so far. Pole on Friday, three wins out of three. Yesterday, there he is, number 414. Rinus van Kaltoot, the Dutch driver for Dams Racing, starts on pole position. Victor Oberg from Sweden for BDB Racing is in cart 417. He starts second. His teammate, Taylor Greenfield from Peru, in cart number 416, is going to be starting third. Giacomo Rossi, number 413, possibly a dark horse here, uh, fourth, because he's shown at times very good pace. Looks like the only other driver that might be able to match the top three in terms of lap times and has a bit of track knowledge as well. Row four then, Konstantin Scholl from Austria in cart 420, the Dams Racing teammate to the pole sitter. Bruno Ponte had a problem in warm-up this morning, but starts in sixth place. The Portuguese driver is in cart 411. Then row four, we've got Geoffrey Rouchet, who got into the top three in one of the heats yesterday. He's in 412. Marnik Batrin, number 419, the Belgian driver. Perhaps he's one to watch coming through. Has at times shown good speed. The final row is Eric Chapon, number 418, and Giuseppe Pierotti, number 421. The red lights are on to 15 lap race and we are go here in Italy. Perfect start for Van Kamtu, but look at the outside here for Victor Oberg trying it on, trying it on and he's going to fail and he's going to lose his position here to his teammate. Taylor Greenfield will come through for a moment, just for a moment. I thought Victor Oberg was going to pull off something stunning around the outside at turn two to get the lead of the race. He had to risk it. It didn't pay off. And in the end, it's Taylor Greenfield, his teammate, that goes second. And he's trying to be first, trying to go around the outside on the way into turn seven. But Van Kaltoot fends him off. And remember, in the heats, he's won them all. But in one of the races, Greenfield got past him. In the other race, Oberg got past him. So he's not entirely invincible. And they're getting closer and closer to him. They know, though, that the opportunity comes at the start of the race. The second half of the race, he's been pulling away from them. He's been... Very, very quick indeed. It's been a very good start for Konstantin Scholl as well. Teammate to Van Kalmte, who's got himself up to fourth place. Jeffrey Rusche is in fifth position. Here are the top two nose to tail. And here's a change of lead. Through comes Taylor Greenfield. His teammate, Victor Oberg, tries it on as well. There's a tiny bit of wheel rubbing. And for once, Van Kalmte, he's not able to fight straight back. So, Taylor Greenfield from third, leading the race. Victor Oberg's got to go for second place. He's no, not quite at the end of the back straight, but only because Van Kalmte was so late on the race. And they got to the into the third position. So Oberg is trying these moves and it's going against him. He stays forth with Richie just behind him in fifth place. The new race leader, though, is from third place, Taylor Greenfield. What a start to this race for Taylor Greenfield. Doing a grand job to get through past Rinsdale Campton, which he'll be delighted with first off. But now he's got to try and hold him for the next what, 13 laps in this race, which is going to be hard enough on its own. So Taylor goes through in the lead of the race. Rinsdale Campton, who sits in second place, his teammate that is behind him in third, which is Constantine Schnell. What a move there from Victor. He's certainly showing the speed so far within this pre-final. And we did say earlier on, it can be done round the outside at turn number one. He almost had it, didn't he? But unfortunately, just lost out. He was pushed wide and he had to settle for second place behind Rinus there. But he gave it a good go, uh, which is one of the things you need to be doing within this kart racing. Because if you don't give it a go, you're not going to get anywhere. As they go through for another time, the top four are tied together and probably don't rule out as of yet the fifth place man, which is Marnik Batron. He's not too far adrift either. Four tenths of a second back in fifth place and keep him with the leaders for now but Victor Oberg he's got up to third he's looking Chris to get into second as well before too much longer yeah and Oberg's got the fastest lap of the race look with a 49.640 so pushing on and trying to close the gap to Renus van Kaltoot and now going for it down the inside into the hairpin and the Swede is through goodness me the pulse is up he's down to third place but would he rather be third than second he can't be first at the moment because Greenfield is six tenths clear He's got his teammate behind him, so it's the PDB Racing Drivers, first and second. It's the Dams Racing Drivers, third and fourth. And you're absolutely right about Marnik Batchel. He was very quick on Friday, but didn't have a great day yesterday. He's not to be discounted. The Belgian driver making good progress and hanging on to them in fifth place. So Taylor Greenfield leads. Victor Oberg second. For the first time all weekend, I say the sentence, Rinus van Kaltoot does not lead because he's there in cart 414. 
in third place. Giacomo Rossi, I told you he's quick, but he wants to be. He goes with a 49.54 seconds as the new fastest driver of the race. He's currently running in sixth position. He's three tenths of a second behind Batrin, the Belgian driver. So it's pretty tight here, much tighter than we saw in the heats yesterday. And it just shows, doesn't it, how the track evolves and changes and how you've got to keep working on your setup. And never, never rest on your laurels. Konstantin Scholl down the inside of his teammate, Rinus van Kaltut. What is going on here? The Pulse are down to fourth place, down to fifth place, because battering comes through. And now you start to wonder, Matt, if there is a problem with that cart, because the way van Kaltut has been driving all weekend long, it looks like he hasn't quite got the setup right. He does fight back, though, gets one back, and ahead of battering to fourth place. So he's digging in there. But there's no way he's got the speed advantage he had yesterday. Now, it's a real shock there. So, Rindistan come through, has dropped down. And it looks like Giacomo Rossi has got through as well. So, he's up into what's going to be fourth place by the looks of it. So, uh, a real shock within this race. Rinus has got plenty of work to do to try and catch up with the top three once more. He's trying to get his way through at turn number seven, but not quite good enough there. And to be fair to Marnik Batron, he's sticking with him and looking to go through once more here as well. So, uh, I'm not too sure what has happened. I just said to Rindistan come through. There he goes. Marnik Batron down the inside and Rinus van Kampthout sits down in sixth place which is far from best for a start for the final so he's got plenty of work to do within the rest of this race as they come through nine laps to go then as Taylor Greenfield leads the way by four tenths of a second second is his teammate Victor Oberg at the minute in cart 417 and then Constantine Shaw has had a better run there goes Rinus for a move down the inside back ahead of Marnik Patron and so again he's back and forth with this man but it's not where he wants to be he wants to be out front he wants to be leading the race but for now it's not quite happening he's running out of time and the race is kind of uh, spreading away from him and he's not having any chance to get back with the top four Victor Oberg has gone through another quickest lap of the race 49.350 which means Chris the gap between first and second is sure to come down here yeah you've got to assume that Serena Van Kalmtus has got a problem because uh, given how well he's been performing this weekend, things haven't changed suddenly. So he must have a slight issue with that cart somewhere along the line. It's his race craft that's kind of keeping him in the mix, isn't it? But when he got past Batrin, Rossi was able to get past both of them a couple of laps ago. The Taylor Greenfield, as we go into the second half of the race, leads the way for PDB in cart 416, but the gap is coming down by a tenth of a second on every lap as his teammate closes down. 417, Victor Oberg quickest man on the track at the moment Konstantin Scholl third I take it back Rossi's gone through and got even quicker with a 49.2 so Rossi's fourth but now he becomes the fastest man on track and how much is he catching Scholl about a tenth of a second so second is catching first fourth is catching third by about a tenth of a second a lap now you can see the graphic on the screen 1.4 seconds is all that covers the top four in this race Again, on this lap, the gap has been reduced. The margin coming down between the two PDB racing teammates. You can see they clip the curves with the left rear there as they go through turn 11. Really stood over it. Van Kampthout noticeably doing that more than some of the others in the early part of the race. They lift the clear, clearly off the track, the, uh, the rear end of the cart through that penultimate turn of the lap. So into the second half of the race, the gap is down to 0.2 of a second. Oberg was a little bit quicker on that lap, Matt, but only by half a tenth of a second um, and now Rinus van Kalte gets incredibly the fastest lap of the race so has he been able to tweak something maybe with the carburation uh, or maybe they've just got the cart set up better for long distance running and he's going to come on in the second half of the race with the tyres. Yeah that could be the way of course because from yesterday we have uh, again increased our race distance so 15 laps if Rinus was a bit unsure on how well the cart would do towards the end he may have just made those adjustments so he sits in fifth place he's got himself back in a stride now of course he was kind of outed wide on those first few corners so he had to try and make up uh, to the best of his ability but the top two we focus on once more Victor Oberg and Taylor Greenfield in second and first place these two at the minute are far enough up the road they can have a little battle amongst themselves hopefully not taking themselves out as teammates uh, but definitely they can scrap for the lead of the race again uh, the man in second Victor Oberg will want to get his way through here so we'll need to think fast about this one because we've just got six laps to go as Renus once more goes through across the line he does another quickest lap of the race 49.114 for now he's seven tenths of a second back from uh, Jacoma Rossi who in turn is only a tenth back from uh, Constantine Scholl so good scrap as you said for first good scrap there for third and here comes the man who started from pole position Rinus van Kampthu might just get there before the end and he could be back up into uh, third place for now not a bad starting position again inside run from fifth place but he'll want to be as high as he possibly can for the final later on this afternoon now something that we don't know is what tyres they're all on because there is a limit to how many tyres you can use during qualifying and during the races and by the time you get to Sunday normally the drivers will have one brand new set of slick tyres left now 
Renus might just be running an older set of tyres here for the pre-final and saving his new slicks for the final. Normally, when you go onto the grids for a final, they pretty much all save their slicks for the finals. But you just wonder if maybe the PDB drivers, I don't know, it's just a guess, but maybe they've gone the other way. They've thought, well, as we see a move there, and uh, that is into the hairpin, and it's Konstantin Scholl losing out to Rossi to go third now for the Italian, getting himself in a really good position for the final. So third for Rossi. But maybe PDB have just gone the other way and just thought, well, we've got to get ahead of him on the grid. It's the only chance we'll have in the final. Maybe they've tried something different. We'll only know the answer to that, Matt, when we go on the grid for the, the grid walk for the final. But it's just maybe a theory. That said, if Van Kalmtut is on all the tyres, he, he seems to be going better in the second half of the race than he did in the first half of the race. Yeah, it certainly is because the, the lap times are still coming down for Rina. So he is uh, closing back up now on his teammate. Constantine show is near enough, touching the back of his rear bumper. So uh, before too much longer, we may see a move from Rina. And that's going to happen down at turn number nine to the inside of his teammate. No contact whatsoever. Very nicely done there for Rina, who then says to Constantine, let's now work together as teammates and try and catch up and get ourselves into third and fourth places. They're going to try and work their way past the Italian, which is Giacomo Rossi, as the leaders come through then to complete another lap. We're on to uh, the 12th lap of this race, 13th lap in fact, three to go now, as they head their way through the first couple of corners. The top two, Taylor Gronfield and Victor Oberg, separated by just three tenths of a second. Then there's a seven tenth of a second gap back to Giacomo Rossi, who is at the minute clear enough of those two behind us. Taylor Greenfield there has a little look over his shoulder just to make sure he knows where his teammate is if he's not going to try anything too stupid on the closing laps of this brief final. Uh, but I'm sure now Renus is still going fairly quickly and he's looking to catch our third place man, which again would be an even better starting position uh, for the final after what's been a little bit of a disappointing race. Not too sure what's happened, but I'm sure we'll find out before the race gets underway uh, what has happened with Renus and uh, how he's set to go for the final. You'd only go for fourth place if you knew you'd had a good chance of going for third, wouldn't you, if you're Renus? Otherwise, you just sit behind your teammate, stay fifth and make sure you're on the inside line for the start of the final. He is pulling away from Constantine Scholl. What's his lap time like? Uh, 49.056, quicker than Rossi, but only by a few thousandths of a second. Rossi is very, very quick indeed at this stage of the race. There's the race leader, uh, sorry, second place man, Victor Oberg. 4.17, four tenths behind his teammate Taylor Greenfield, who is going to win a race for the first time this weekend if he hangs on to this for another two and a half laps. Through they go, uh, exiting turn eight now, down towards the first of these back-to-back -back hairpins at turn nine. Uh, the gap may be coming down a little bit on this lap. It's hard to judge, but three tenths of a second at the start of the lap. It looks certainly through the twisty bits, like Victor Oberg gains a bit of ground here. Follow me, points forward, says Taylor Greenfield. Well, he's following you. He's got no choice at the moment, but the gap definitely creeping down. I think Victor Oberg is having to push on because he's got Rossi coming after him. They are teammates, Matt. It's the final lap of the race, but Victor Oberg... He's out for himself come the final, and he would love to be on pole position. He's got the gap down to two tenths of a second. Rossi still a little way clear of Van Kalmthut. Looks like he's going to be starting the final from third. Yeah, they'll all give it their all on this final lap then as they work their way in towards the right-hander at turn six. Can Victor Oberg close enough to make a move on Taylor Greenfield? Now, both of those, though, have got to be wary of our third-place man, who is he looked to be a little bit closer there, but he's now just falling back. Jacoma Rossi in third place. There goes Renus through in fourth. But the top two are the men to look out for. Victor Oberg gets ever closer down towards the final hairpin at turn 10. But it's going to be a first win of the weekend by the looks of it. Through the left-hander, on towards the final corner. Taylor Greenfield will win the X30 Supers here at the Sete Largo circuit. He again is delighted with that win. He comes through uh, for the PDB racing team uh, to take the victory ahead of his teammate, Victor Oberg, in cart 417. And that was a really good move early on to get himself through, get past the pole man, Rings Van Kamthu. And that's how the uh, final grid will line up for later on this afternoon. It's Greenfield ahead of Oberg. Giacomo Rossi will start from third place. A great drive there from the Italian. Uh, Rins van Kamthout, maybe a few problems, maybe a few tweaks after the uh, heat yesterday, just to change that car to see if it handles any differently. But in the end, he comes through in what's going to be fourth position. And for the first time this weekend as well, in terms of racing, he'll be starting from the outside of row number two for the Dams Racing Team. Behind him, his teammate was Constantine Scholl uh, in fifth position. Then it's Marnik Batron who came through in sixth. Giuseppe Pierotti, the Italian in seventh. Eric Chapon in eighth. Uh, the Portuguese racer who had problems this morning, that was Bruno Ponti in ninth place. And Jeffrey Ruscha had problems. He was a non-finisher for OKS. He finishes down in 10th position. But a great race there for the two teammates. PDB Racing take a 1-2 in this pre-final. It's Taylor Greenfield ahead of Victor Oberg, which sets us up for a very interesting final 